In this video, we are going to learn about a new characteristic of Entity Framework Core 9, and that is that they have revolutionized the way we do data seeding. The idea is that when you want to do data seeding, it means that you want to insert predefined data on the database, and that data is needed for your application to be able to run successfully. Okay, that is great. But what happens? In the past, we had a way of doing data seeding with Entity Framework Core, and that was using migrations. Now, that has several limitations. For example, the data basically had to be static, which means that we weren't able to do many transformations to it. For example, I wasn't able to consult a web API or to query a database before doing the data seeding so that based on some information, for example, that I get from a web API, from an external web API, I can then insert that predefined data in my database. That was impossible with migrations. So that certainly limited the things we were able to do. Now with this new way of doing data seeding in Entity Framework Core 9, we can do this and more. Let's see an example. We are here in Visual Studio. We are here in a sample web API application. We have this application DB contest here. And as you can see here, we have a simple table, a single table called people based on this person entity, which just have two properties, ID and name. So as you can see, this is a very basic sample application. And the first thing that I want to show you is how was this done before? How we used to use data seeding before Entity Framework Core 9? For that, we had to use or model creating. That means that we use the Fluent API. So here we have, for example, model builder, entity, person, has data, new person, ID one and name Felipe. So with this, I am making sure that Every time I run my migrations, every time I apply my migrations in the database, I make sure that we're going to have a record in the people table called Felipe with ID one. Now, this was actually one of the problems with this old way of doing data seeding. And that was that you had to necessarily specify the ID of the record. Sometimes that is not a problem, but in some scenarios, it may be difficult. For example, if you already have data in that table, you don't want them to insert repeated IDs. So this was in the past, as I mentioned, so I will just comment this out. Now let's do the new way of doing data seeding. So let's come to the program class. We do this from here, from this add DB context. Here I can say options, use SQL Server in my case. Then after this, I can say, let me say here dot use seeding. We have two options. We have use async seeding or use seeding which as their name implies, one is for asynchronous seeding and the other is for synchronous seeding. We're going to start with use seeding, which is the most simple one. I want to say here, context discard variable, because we're not going to use that Boolean parameter here in this video. So this context is the DB context. It is not the application DB context, but the DB context. This means that I have not access through this context, for example, to this property that I have here. I have to use set for that. So let's do that. Let me say here, I will do the same example. I just want to make sure if we have or not Felipe in the database. And if we don't have it, then we're going to insert it. So let me say here, bar Felipe exists equal to context. Remember that this is the DB context, not the application DB context. And therefore I have to use set here and pass the entity. So person, and then I will say here, any, not any async, any, because this is synchronous code. So any, and then I will say here, x name equal equal to Felipe. Now, if Felipe does not exist, then we're going to insert it. So let me say here, context set person. And let me say here, at, and I will pass a new person. But notice that I will only pass the name of the person and not the ID. That is the first main difference that we have with the old version of data seeding in Entity Framework Core. And that is that we don't have to specify the ID. We can do it if we want to, but we don't have to. So let me say here, context save changes. All right. So now how do I execute this method? Now, before I do that, let's make sure here in my people table, in my database, that we don't have a record here, right? So now one way of executing this UCD method here in development is to say package manager console. And let me say here, update database. With this update database, we're going to execute this UCD method that we have here. All right, so now let's come back here. 
Uh, let me press F5. And let's see that we have now Felipe here. Excellent. This means that indeed we were able to use this UCD method. Now, as I mentioned before, this is for synchronous code. For the asynchronous version, we can use use async seeding. So let me see that. Let's say use async seeding. And it's basically the same. I can, I just have to say here async context discard and also the cancellation token. That's the main difference that we have access to a cancellation token. And let me close this here. And then here, what I have to do if I want to have the same functionality, I have to say this copy paste. And then instead of using any, I can use any async. And of course, because I'm using any async, I have to await this here. And therefore now this works. And the same goes for this. I can say async here and then await here. And as you can see, it works. Now, should we use one or the other? We should use both. According to the official documentation from Microsoft, we should use both methods. Why is that? Because sometimes you are going to run this. For example, when you use a update database, like we did here in the package manager console, and other times you are going to use that use async seeding. For example, when you run the ensure created async method. So that is why we're recommended to use both. Now, if you are sure, for example, that you're only going to be using use seeding, then you can just implement that one and not implement this one. But the official documentation from Microsoft recommends implementing both. Now, let's see what happens if I comment this out and then I try to run again my update database. Will this method be executed? Let's see that. Package Manager Console, Update Database, Enter, and let's see that now we are going to get an error. And we're going to get an error because Update Database executes the UCD method, not the use async seeding method. Therefore, even if you only want to use async seeding, if you want to use Update Database, you are going to have to implement the use seeding. That is why, again, Microsoft recommends implementing both because you may need them. You may think that you only want to use this one, but in some scenarios you are going to have to use, for example, the synchronous version or vice versa. And notice please that this is c -sharp code. You can do whatever you want here. Do you want to consult the database? Well, we are doing that here. Do you want to consult a web API so that you can get a response and from that response you want to insert data in your database? You can do that also. You can do whatever transformation to the data you want. This is something that was not available when using migrations, when using the old version of this functionality. With this new version, we have more capabilities at our disposal. Now, something that I want to show you next is that you may be wondering, okay, so how do we execute this method? For example, this one, or it could be the async seeding one. How can we execute it when we deploy our application, for example, to production? That is very important because, of course, in production, you are not going to say update database. You are not going to use the package manager console. And therefore, there are basically two ways to do this. The first one is to execute it at the start top of your application. That is when your application is initialized. And the second one is to have an external process that does this. In our case, in this video, we're going to do the first method. We're going to do some code here. We're going to put some code here that is going to execute the ensure created method that is going to execute this use method. So let's do that. For that, we need to create a scope because we're going to get a service here. So let me say here, var scope equal to app services create a scope because remember that the application DB contest by default is a scope service. So let me say here, var application DB context equal to a scope service provider get required service and let me pass here the application db context application db context all right so now i can say here application db context database and then ensure created now notice that we have two we have ensure created and ensure created async as you may imagine ensure created will ensure that the database is created and also apply the migrations and also is going to execute that data settings method in the case of ensure created that one is going to execute this use seeding. And if you use ensure created async, that one is going to execute the use async seeding. In our case, we're going to use ensure created. So ensure created, and that's it. Now, I want to show you that 
when I run the application, we're going to execute a migration. So for that, I want to clean up my database. So let me do this truncate table. Let's see that now. We don't have any records here, right? And also, I'm not going to run the update database. What I'm going to do is to run my application. Control F5 to run my application. And now let's see that our application has been run. I want to look for this console. Here we have the console. We have that our application is running. And therefore, if I come here, F5, we're going to see that we have Felipe again, which means that indeed we were able to execute the data seeding when running our application. So what do you think about this? Do you like the new way of doing data seeding in Entity Framework Core or do you like the old way? And by the way, if you want to learn more about Entity Framework Core, buy my Udemy course today. Link with a discount in the description of this video. Thank you.